is covering the spread. Part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are at a pretty critical juncture for this 2023 NFL season, not just because we saw a couple of big teams fall in week number six, but also because we got some pretty high profile matchups coming up in week number seven. The Baltimore Ravens taking on the Detroit Lions. We have got the Eagles taking on the Dolphins, and this is going to show the strength of some teams we've had our eyes on throughout this year. We're going to break down the futures market right now, talk about those 49ers and Eagles lost with Ryan Williams, get his read on those, and I'll take a look ahead to week number seven based on what my models are saying. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and on FanDuel Research. Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Join here to kick things off by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, we are on to week number seven. How are you doing today? Oh, we're doing great, Jim. Uh, outside of... there, um, But... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. we're on to week seven. We're on to week seven. We're almost at the midpoint of the season, if you can believe it. Um, and, you know, we're, we're just grinding. We're just grinding out. We're just grinding it out as uh, as they come to us, Jim. We're just taking them one step at a time. So uh, we're sticking with props and uh, the traditional markets where I always tell you, uh, it, it, you know, they're, they're set that way for a reason. Um, mm -hmm. We'll we'll try and uh, we'll try and get some futures action for the people and uh, and get back on track. Yeah, I am someone who buys into analytics, so like I'm not going to rail on Brandon Staley, but I think that I it's nice to have the excuse of like, oh, Brandon Staley should have kicked the field goal. That's why I lost my bet. It's not because of me, Ryan. It's not because I made a mistake. It's because <laughs> right. he made a mistake. Um, and right. like, you know, when he was when he decided to go for it, I was like, yeah, I like this decision. You know, holding a Chargers uh, money line ticket. Like, okay, it's a good choice. And then. But I do kind of want to have the excuse. I, like, I need the out. Again, it's not my fault. It's his fault that I lost the bet. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the best place to point fingers. So that's right. Uh, <laughs> we, we will do just that. It is my fault for believing in Brandon Staley. I will say that. That, that is definitely on me. But either way, we're going to lick our wounds and head into week number seven. You're breaking down um, the futures market with Ryan. Then I'll take a look ahead and give a look into what my numbers are saying about week seven. Luckily, no chargers on the bet slip for me for this week. Before we dive into that, quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and over on Spotify as well. We appreciate those of you who have done so already. All these shows do go up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account or download FanDuel TV Plus on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Let's begin things, Ryan, by talking about the losses for the 49ers and the Eagles. 49ers falling to the Browns, Eagles to the Jets. First loss of the year for both those teams. Any cause for concern for you on those teams? Or was this kind of an off week uh, where they were both facing pretty tough defenses? Yeah. Uh, where do I want to start? Uh, let's start with the Eagles. Um, and you know, we, we know that the Jets is a tough defense. And, and so, you know, I think what's, what's, what's more concerning is just what we're seeing on the Philadelphia side of the, or offensive side of the ball, where Jalen Hurts has not been able to, to get going. I mean, I'm looking at the list here of just quarterbacks that have more same or more passing touchdowns than Jalen Hurts. We're looking at Jordan Love, Joe Burrows tied with seven, Jimmy Garoppolo tied with seven, Sam Howell, Brock Purdy, Justin Fields, Jared Goff, Russell Wilson, and then your, you know, your normal suspects that you would expect to be at the top. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, he's fourth in the MVP race right now um, on the FanDuel Sportsbook, and the numbers really aren't telling that story. So, you know, they have a good matchup this week against the Dolphins and good. I mean, I expect to see points scored in that game. Have not even looked at that total, but if it's anywhere shy of 53, I think that, you know, that's probably wrong. Um, and we'll probably get to that point by the end of the week. They have to come out and they have they have to show out. I mean, it was a tough defense that they were facing. I think they had opportunities. Just Jalen Hurts had his team in a position to, you know, reap opportunities. And the scoreboard won't tell you that because it was a pick six uh, that kind of put it away for the Jets. 
Um, but they they definitely want to want to get going. Dallas Cowboys are right on their tails. Uh, the Detroit Lions are right on their tails. So I do think, you know, especially when we're talking about the NFC, um, the NFC East division, like they they have to start coming up. Now, the 49ers, on the other hand, I mean, you know, you you, you just chalk that up to, to what it is. I mean, this this team is. This team is rock solid. There's a reason why they're they're number one on the FanDuel Sportsbook now to win the Super Bowl. They're just so good in every facet of the game. There, there are just these times when you go up against teams and, you know, that's uh, that's what happens. Again, you know, we're talking about the defensive side of the ball. Everybody was wondering, will this Cleveland defense be able to do this against a team like the 49ers? They had been having a soft schedule pretty much up until that point when you look at it. The real interesting stat that I saw, uh, Jim, if you can believe this, is Jim Schwartz against Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. Is- three and oh when he's yeah. coaching the defensive side of the ball um so that's you know just one of those interesting you know matchups where you know you kind of look at the tea leaves and, and that kind of paints the picture for you um uh, i do believe you know th- they're gonna get debo back on track i think he's you know back, back healthy i know he had left that game um christian mccaffrey again i know he is banged up as well and that that's the achilles heel of this team and has always and has always been um through the course of time is can they stay healthy but this offense stays healthy this defense stays healthy they're a tough team to beat and so you know it's the nfl any given sunday right and the other days that they play mondays sometimes saturdays thursdays um but i i i do think that you know, my cause for concern is nowhere near the level for the 49ers as it might be for the Eagles, which is still tempered. But I want to see something against the Dolphins uh, to go forward with them. Yeah, 49ers playing in the rain, playing in the wind, uh, playing with with Debo and McCaffrey leaving mid game. And, you know, both neither injury seems to be long term. Like McCaffrey may not go this week, but it sounds like beyond that he should be OK. And Debo day to day as well so I, I agree with you were no real concerns there the Eagles have just felt off offensively this year and I don't know what's causing that um you know they've had relative health along the offensive line I know Lane Johnson got banged up in the that uh, week six game but like before that they were pretty healthy it seems like they're having trouble getting Devonte Smith truly going like Adrian Brown's been phenomenal um but like I don't know it just felt like off well, and I'm- Having trouble getting Devonta Smith going, Jim. Devonta Smith, like this dude's on a milk carton right now. Um, <laughs> I don't. I mean, he really needs to. You know, they they showed the 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 linemen, you know, getting gifts from the quarterbacks or whatever. Like Devonta <laughs> Smith's got to go and talk to you know, talk to Kelsey, talk to the rest of those boys, and what can I do to you know make Jalen Hurts be right. back in his good graces? He was dropping, you know, passes. He missed the pass that would have been like a fifty-plus yard touchdown. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing, um, yep. and and just. Had have not they have not been on the same page for whatever yeah. reason um he he's gotta you know he's gotta be able to to rectify that i know that aj brown was in jalen hurts here to give him a ball he's you know uh the jalen hurts is the godfather to his son all that <laughs> stuff you know the narratives are all over the place but you know the the these guys definitely have to do their part and 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 show out for for jalen I got to get the Godfather narrative involved in like DFS projections at some point. I think that's pretty necessary. I think that oh, does definitely. make a big, big difference. But yeah, I agree with you where it's like, I'm not that concerned about the Eagles yet, but I am more concerned about them than I are than I am about the 49ers. Now, I pulled up the Super Bowl odds earlier on to show where things were at right now. 49ers plus 430, Eagles plus 750. Right between them is the Chiefs. And Ryan, I have not. We haven't talked about the Chiefs very much here on the show, in large part because they've taken care of business beyond uh, that week one loss. And that week one loss looks better every single week with how the Lions are playing. So where are you at on the Chiefs right now, a a team that we haven't really talked much about here on the show? Yeah, I am. uh, I'm lukewarm about them. And just because, like, I, I don't feel like there's, merit to discounting them and i don't feel like there's merit for them to be the number one team uh in in the league right now as far as the power rankings go uh they you outside of travis kelsey um you know which travis kelsey having the scare we we weren't able to talk about that because he ended up coming back in the same game uh two weeks ago two games ago i should say um that that would have been very concerning um because he is 
by far the the catalyst of this offense um, for for guys not named Patrick Mahomes. Uh, you know, Rasheed Rice. I think we start to see him get going here as we get later on into the season. He looks like he can be a guy that that Mahomes is able to rely on. You know, outside of uh, you know, having to throw the ball to Valdez Scantling or, you know, the other uh, guys who, who are out there. Um, Isaiah Pacheco getting going, you know, is definitely going to be something that I think they they need to to do um, to be able to take the pressure off of Mahomes and the rest of these guys. But I mean, this offense is just, you know, so explosive. Trust in Mahomes, trust in Andy Reid. The defense has definitely looked like they've, you know, got a pep in their step as far as recent years. And they, you know, this unit has been together for quite some time. So I, I definitely am liking you know the Kansas City where they are I don't think that there should be any you know merit to discounting them and honestly like the more that the you know the more that the Bills and the Dolphins uh and some of these other teams in the AFC kind of make a name for themselves and that starts to trickle down I mean the sports book is you know they're hanging on Jim they don't want to move Kansas City out of that two spot move them to three move them to four uh, because we know we know what that's going to mean. People are just yeah. going to jump all over that. You do love that they get a matchup uh, coming up here against the Los Angeles Chargers, where uh, Patrick Mahomes is seven and two against that team, and that just feels like a good way to kind of write things back and get back into the conversation for them. Yeah, they are six point favorites in that game right now against the Chargers. That is an afternoon game on Sunday. I am delighted about that. Um, I know I don't want to go back to the Chargers after the way things went there, but at least it should be a fun game uh, Sunday, especially because I will not be betting on the Chargers. So what could be more fun than ignoring them uh, from a betting perspective during that time? Now, with me at the Chiefs, I think the the thing that I like about them, Ryan, right now is that the defense is playing as well as it is like the. Yeah. I don't know, the the typical flow of a chief season is a defense struggles early on. And that because it's a very complex system, Steve Spagnolo eventually gets all the new faces on defense integrated and they improve in the second half of the year. And this year, like if I ignore my prior, they're eighth in my defensive power rankings so far this year. They're they've been very good on that side of the football right. and it's allowed them to kind of take an inverse approach where the offense is the one trying to get its rhythm going early on and then can hopefully excel later on. You mentioned Rasheed Rice. He's looked really good. I think that if they are able to increase the snap rate, that could be a good thing for this passing offense to get them at a better level. So I feel pretty good about them because the defense is playing so well, whereas typically that's our big concern with this Chiefs team early on is the defense. It's just kind of flipped. So I trust the offense to get things going eventually. That offensive line is stellar. They've got Kelsey. Uh, they got Mahomes. And you can kind of figure out the rest in there. So I agree with you where yeah. they're appropriately valued with where they stand right now. Yeah. And I, just one quick thing, Jim, what I'll say is that, you know, uh, they do have the longest active winning streak uh, in the National Football League now with the Eagles and 49ers oh, yeah. having lost um, on the same day. Now, the caveat to that for this year is when you're looking at who they've played this year, Jim, they only have beaten one team with a winning record thus far. <laughs> um, so, you know, and, you know, that loss to Detroit is is against the winning team. So yeah. uh, that win against Jacksonville, which they had to eke that out in week two, yeah. that's pretty much their only – they got to play the Jets, they got to play the Bears, Minnesota, and Denver. Um, so we're looking – you know, they're going to play the Chargers, then Denver again. And then they get the matchup against uh, Miami in two weeks, oh. the three games, that is, uh, before their week 10 bye. Now, that's really what, where we're going to see them. You know, we, we want the Dolphins to keep winning. We want the Chiefs to keep winning. We want that marquee matchup, uh, which is actually a London game, if I'm not mistaken, or an it's overseas Germany. game, I should say. So, Germany, yeah. That, yeah, that's going to be a fun one to, to keep eyes on. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll start to see where where things are at and where the where the public is really feeling about the Chiefs after that one. I just had to check to see what time that game started because I wanted to see if they snuck it on the main slate. I know typically the London slash Germany games are 8.30 or 8.30 Central. Right. Uh, this one is also in the morning, so it's not in the main slate, and that makes me very sad. So, oh well, we, we tried. Maybe we can uh, bribe someone game. in Germany to, to push that game back to the main slate because <laughs> right, uh, right. I, I think we could use that at a certain point. All right, let's like, take a look back at week six overall, Ryan. Where Which team saw their stock fluctuate most for you in week six, whether in a positive or a negative sense? Uh, let's go in here. Um, let's start with the positives. 
we're gonna you know we're gonna go back to the to the Ravens side of the ball and you know I just like the way that they I mean really this team has just had you know they've had terrible luck in the injury in the injury department the past couple of years we know it you know kind of hails on Lamar Jackson saw saw a stat um come out I believe it was from front office sports of just you know Lamar Jackson being responsible for nearly 45 percent of his team's rushing output um, <laughs> in his career, which is oh. by far you know <laughs> one of the you know largest by any quarterback um, in history. Um, and you know he just has to do so much. We've seen the number. I had kind of you know written up an article just about you know the state of the futures market, and he was 20 to one going into this past week. He's now kind of moved, I believe, to 14 to one. Yeah, 14 to one to win the MVP. Like I still just like the Ravens, the way that they're coached. Um, the offense gets going. Zay Flowers getting more involved. Love to see that. Not worried about Mark Andrews. I think he'll still be there. Um, hopefully they can get something going with the running back situation um, because that's that's been kind of a, a thing that's been bothered them. That's bothered them over the course of time. But I do think the Ravens, you know, being able to kind of take care of business on the road in a tough environment against Tennessee and just kind of staying in the mix, staying in the mix. Like the, the AFC North is really theirs, theirs to lose. They have such a leg up are slightly a leg up on the Bengals right now um, that, uh, you know, I'm willing to, you know, buy merit in them. Now the Cincinnati Bengals, Jim, I, I just, we talk, I talk about them every week and I'm going to continue to do so because the talent on paper, like what this team is capable of is just not being reflected in the market right now. They're plus 490 to win the AFC North and they're only a game back. Like they can start to, close this gap very soon, um, very rapidly, and nobody would be surprised. So any type of futures that we can get on the Cincinnati Bengals right now, like I just want to be ahead of that curve. Like we're going to, you know, we're talking about the Joe Burrow injury from the beginning of the season and then early on. And the more the time goes on, like the more he's just going to get healthy. And if they, you know, T Higgins is back in the mix and the defense has actually been making some noise. So I really do like the Cincinnati Bengals um, to be, you know, in, in a good spot for success in these next coming weeks. And we want to take advantage of that. Now, the teams that I'm down on, we don't ha we haven't talked about them all too much, but I do think that they're firmly in the mix for the number one pick is the New England Patriots. What's going yeah. on in New England right now is just extremely concerning. Um, I, you know, we've never been in a situation to be able to trust this team to tank necessarily. Uh, they keep saying that Mac is their guy, but to be in a position where you could possibly, you know, have the number one pick, have a franchise changer, especially if Belichick's going to stay there, whether it be in a coaching role or a GM role, like I think the writings on the wall here, like they, you know, the division that they play in, especially having to go against the, the Dolphins and the Bills, like they, they are in a position for, for this number one pick. They're plus 750 right now to have the worst record. And, you know, really, you know, they just fall into the caveat for me for all those teams. Carolina is a tough one because they have yet to, you know, win a game. And, and I, don't, I don't know what their odds are for their first win, but it, it's probably not, you know, it's probably not great um, as far as in the public's favor. But the, I have to bring up the Patriots because we have not talked about them. I find I find them very concerning. Uh, I think that the the thing they could do to like help us, like, because they're annoying to watch. If you want yeah. to be watchable, because like if you're going to suck, at least be watchable. Like, just let Malik Cunningham cook. Like, um, I, I think that that could be a lot of fun. You know, they did it a couple plays on Sunday, um, and like. I had the Raiders money line. So I was like, that's like the one thing that may be a bit uncomfy about that bet was like seeing him out there because it's like, it's different. And like, I know what Mac Jones is and it's not going to scare me that much from a betting perspective, but like Malik Cunningham could be weird. And I don't know if that's yeah. a good or a bad thing, but it's different than Mac Jones, which is like a known negative. So like, you know, at least have some fun if you're going to suck. Well, and also, I mean, you know, let's talk about the future, right? So, if you're going to go after a guy in the number one pick of, as Caleb Williams out of USC, let's see how you can design an sure. offense around a guy who can use his legs a little bit. Yeah. Like get, the, try, try and uh, try and get that scheme going uh, prior to that. So that, so that's a fun one. Uh, the other one in the AFC is just the Tennessee Titans. Um, yeah. We actually talked about them over the summer, Jim, about, yeah. you know, potentially having, you know, one of the worst records, if not the worst record uh, in the league and finishing last in the AFC South. And for that one, you know, it's just kind of pour one out for Derrick Henry. Like, I think he's 
probably on the verge of like having a little less in the tank, maybe going to, you know, getting on a team that yeah, kind of needs something to just get over that hump. Um, and, you know, being uh, not an every down player, but just somebody right. who's utilized in the red zone and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I think they have to look uh, at their future and kind of what that holds now with Tannehill, you know, being injured and, you know, not really having the time to get Will Levis set up for success. They might be in the mix for a quarterback again um, very soon. So that's just a regime that, that's, you know, flipping on its head and uh, doing a 180. Yeah, this would never happen because the NFL never has fun trades, but Derrick Henry to the Ravens would, would rule. I'd be into Oh, that. my God. It would never happen. Incredible. Like, it'll never happen. I don't want to get anyone anyone's hopes up. It'll never happen, but, like, it'd be fun. So, right. you know, if, again, if you want to – if you want to make us happy, NFL, make that happen. All right, Ryan, any final futures you want to lock in before we get into week number seven? No, I think we I think we hit on them. I, yeah. uh, I think we we hit on the ones that we're looking at. I'll definitely, after week seven, we'll have uh, some fun ones to talk about as we get to that midway point. So, uh, yeah, just keep keep your eyes out on the market. Take, take some shots. This this is still the time uh, to, to be able to do so. And there's some fun ones out there to be had. So make sure you're scouring the market uh, for good prices because that's what it's all about at this time of the season. Just getting getting some shots on some good prices, some good long shots uh, that could really pay off dividends. And things can move fast. So uh, keep your eyes appealed, as Ryan said. That is Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, a pleasure to have you on once again. We will talk to you once again Monday to preview the 49ers and the Vikings from Monday Night Football. <laughs> Sounds good, Jim. Can't wait for it. All righty. Again, check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. We'll have him on here every Monday and Tuesday to pick his brain on Monday Night Football and the futures market as well. We'll dive into week seven and take a look at what my numbers say there in just one second. But first, snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets. That expires seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Help is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Let's take a look now at the week seven spreads, totals, and money lines and see where my model is showing value for week number seven. Let's start things off with a very, very fun matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Baltimore Ravens. Right now, my model shows value in the Lions money line at plus 130. And this is not a spot where I want to bet against Baltimore. My numbers do like them quite a bit, but it just likes the Lions more than the Ravens right now. If we ignore the prior, uh, and the prior for my model was pretty high in the Lions. We were on them a lot last year as well. If we ignore that, though, they're my model's fifth-ranked team on offense. That's not a huge surprise because Jared Goff has been shredding. Uh, they didn't have a Monroe State Brown, but still played very well. So, you know, not a surprise to them fifth in offense. But they're also seventh on defense, which to me at least is surprising. They made a lot of additions on defense, but CJ Gardner Johnson is done for the year. So they've lost some of the additions they made defensively, but they've still played really well. Now, granted, Baltimore is ahead of them defensively. Um, they're fifth there. Uh, so the edge is pretty small. And the offense for Baltimore is a bit behind where Detroit is at right now. Some of that is because the Ravens have gotten unlucky. They've had some really poorly timed drops at crucial moments in games. 
Uh, they've had some bad penalties too. And that's masked how well Lamar Jackson specifically has played at times. But I still think the Lions are undervalued in this spot with where the market has them. I don't mind if you want to take the points. Uh, they're plus three at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, getting the plus three is minus 110 right now. I just show more value on the money line at uh, plus 130. So I think this game should be more of a toss up, honestly. And we're getting the Lions at plus 130. It's a very good number to get them at. So I think that the money line is the way to go here with the Lions. Personally, plus 130, a good value on them against the Ravens. Second bet for me is going to be in a less fun game. Well, less fun for for me, at least, because I've been betting a lot against the Falcons recently and it hasn't always gone perfectly. But I do want to do it once again in laying the two and a half with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the two and a half minus two and a half is minus 112 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think that laying less than a field goal here is pretty attractive because it's a kind of bad matchup for Atlanta's offense. The Buccaneers rush defense, we always had this concept in our head of Todd Bowles being this like mastermind of stopping the rush. And that wasn't true necessarily to begin the year, but it's been more true recently. After you adjust for opponent, the Bucs are now allowing negative 0.06 rushing EPA per attempt on early downs, according to Number Fire's EPA model. And they're at negative 0.06. League average is negative 0.01. So they've been very good there. And that's tough for an Atlanta offense that really does want to run the football when they can. Pass defense for the Bucs has been pretty good too in early downs. It's been more so the late downs where they've struggled. Getting off the field on third and fourth down is the one spot where the Bucks defense hasn't been as sterling as it typically has been. As far as the Falcons defense, they've gotten shredded through the air defensively while being pretty good against the rush. And the Bucs aren't very good on the ground anyway. They do try to run the football a little bit, but like, you know, I think that if we're going to lean into strengths here, it's probably not a bad thing for them to face a defense that is pretty stout against the rush, but not that good against the pass. Uh, the the Bucks passing attack is healthy right now. I was concerned about Mike Evans coming out of the bye, but uh, was good to go for that game on Sunday. They didn't do much, but again, Detroit's defense has exceeded expectations so far this year. I think they should be able to move the ball here. And I think they should be able to hold the Falcons rushing offense in check. So I have the Bucks favored by more than a field goal here. So laying two and a half and minus one twelve, totally fine by me. And I am okay with that. So the Buccaneers minus two and a half and minus one twelve. Second spot I am going for week number seven. Third spread or money line for me is going to be on the uh, Sunday night football game. That is a fun one between the Miami Dolphins and the Philadelphia Eagles, where right now. The Dolphins' money line is plus 112 at FanDuel Sportsbook. They're two-and-a-half-point dogs. I want to take the money line here at plus 112 on the Dolphins. I'm expecting Jalen Carter back for this game for the Eagles. Didn't play against the Jets. Uh, so that'll be a boost for the Eagles' defense from where they were against the Jets. And the Dolphins did struggle against the Bills, which is kind of the one true test they've had so far this year. But it's really tough for me to skew this one as heavily in the Eagles' favor as it is right now. And that's even while not putting too much weight into the Eagles shakiness of the first six weeks. I talked about that with Ryan, where they've looked kind of off. They're still eighth in my offensive power rankings, even if you ignore the high prior I had on them coming into this year. The problem is that the Dolphins are second in that metric, and they're in a tier with the 49ers that is above the rest of the pack. It's the uh, 49ers one, Dolphins two by a hair. Teardrop down to the Bills, who are third. Another teardrop down to the rest of the league. Again, this is just for 2023 data, looking at the offensive side of things. So, like, the Dolphins are have been astronomically good so far this year. It sounds like there's a chance Lane Johnson could go in this game for the Eagles, despite leaving early in week number six. He is a an animal who plays through a lot of crazy stuff. So I'm projecting this right now as if Lane Johnson and Jalen Carter will both play. But if Johnson can't go or Carter can't go, that would tip things even more in Miami's favor. That Bills game where the Dolphins did struggle does give me a bit of pause here, but I have enough faith in the Dolphins to bite at this number. Again, plus 112 on the money line for the Dolphins on Sunday Night Football. I am okay with going there personally on Sunday night. The one total I'm targeting for this week is in the Packers and the Broncos game. Right now, the total is 45. I'd like the under on that one. I know these defenses are not good but neither are the offenses. It's also a below average matchup in terms of pace. Uh, Denver relatively sluggish on pace while Green Bay around average so far this year. 
Denver games in general have been very conducive to overs here. A lot of weird shootouts. And I did get bitten by taking an under on them earlier on this year. That was in the Bears game. And that game went pretty well over that total. But I'd rather bet on the crazy scoring regressing when it's two below average offenses than anything else. I think that offense is stickier than defense. So these defense is not playing well. I am putting less stock in that than I'm putting in the offense is not playing well. And honestly, look at the personnel Denver has on defense. I don't think they should be good, but I don't think they should be as bad as they played so far this year. Maybe the Packers buy and the Broncos mini buy gets these offenses back on track. That could definitely happen. But I just think 44 is a bit too high, given the lack of offensive firepower in this game. Like, would we be shocked if this is a 24-20 total at the end of the game? I wouldn't personally. Uh, so getting a hit, a full hit on uh, 44, pretty solid for me. So I do like the under at 45 at minus 110. Again, it could bite me because neither defense is very good, but I do think that's the right way to go for this game. So four bets for me this week are the Lions money line plus 130, Buccaneers minus two and a half at minus 112, the Dolphins money line at plus 112, and the Packers Broncos under 45, which is minus 110. Before we finish up here, got a recap recommendations from last week here on the show, beginning with Dr. Ed Fang. You can find him on Twitter at the Power Rank and check him out at thepowerrank.com. Ed, one and one this week. The hit was in college. Ed was on Mizzou, plus two and a half. They were taking on Kentucky. That number did close at one and a half, so a point of value there. Not across a key number, but a point of value there for Ed. And Mizzou won this game outright pretty easily. Final score there, 38-21. So good call on Ed uh, by taking Mizzou. Recommended both the spread and the money line there. So good call by Ed as both those do wind up hitting. Ed was on the Chargers, plus two and a half against the Cowboys, as was I, as was Ryan. They were a nightmare because they're the worst. Uh, they almost did hit or cover the two and a half as it was a three-point game, but uh, no win there. The Chargers are the worst. Uh, but again, one one week for Ed. Good season overall for Ed thus far. So follow him on Twitter at the Power Rank. JJ Zacharyson, join us talk player props. You can find him on Twitter at late round QB. Check out his work at lateround.com and the late round fantasy football podcast. JJ three and one on the week, including a long shot touchdown bet. That was Josh Downs at plus three ten. Downs scored late for the Colts while they were in catch up mode, which was. Kind of the thought process there is Jaguars were decently favored. Uh, Colts had Gardner Minshew a quarterback. So went through the air quite a bit and downs. It did score a plus 310. Good call by JJ there. JJ has hit three to one or longer on a touchdown bet in four out of six weeks now. So running hot. Uh, kudos to JJ on that. Other two wins for JJ were Curtis Samuel over 34 and a half receiving yards and Tajay Spears over 15 and a half receiving yards. Samuel was minus 108 to go over 34 and a half. He finished with 42. Spears was minus 114. 48 yard reception for Tajay Spears on a screen uh, late in that game to go well over his total of 15 and a half yards. The lone miss for JJ was Chris Godwin at plus 195 for an anytime touchdown, but Godwin, seven targets, 77 yards, played really well, but no touchdowns to the Bucks overall in that game. So, very good week for JJ. Good calls by him as always. Check him out on Twitter at late round QB. Ryan was with us last night talking Chargers and Cowboys. I talked to him in the Chargers money line. My bad. Um, at least we were both on the under at 50 and a half. So that did help, but uh, the props didn't go our way here. Eckler, uh, Austin Eckler was plus 195 to lead in rushing yards. Ryan liked that number. It was actually Dak Prescott who led in rushing yards. Uh, he had 40 total rushing yards aided by that, uh, that long touchdown scamper. Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler could not get things going. So, uh, Dak actually was the guy with the most rushing yards. We also, we talked about Eckler over 87 and a half rushing plus receiving yards of minus 114. That didn't hit because Eckler didn't get a ton through the air either. Not sure if it was like a easing it back in thing or what, but not a whole lot for Eckler there. And then uh, Ryan also talked about Dak to have 35 plus pass attempts at plus 102. Couldn't get that one either. So um, at least we had the under, but overall rough uh, Monday Night Football game. And it actually ruined my perfect week because I was 3-1 and one for the week. Uh, had the Chargers money line plus 108. That was the one loss. Other recommendations were the Vikings and Bears under 46 and minus 115. I think that one finished with 32 total points. The Bengals Seahawks under 46 and minus 110. They finished with 30 points. Both those games aided by weather. So got good CLV, at least on the 
Vikings Bears game, not as much on the Bengals Seahawks. The win did die down a bit, uh, but either way, both wins there. And I had the Texans money line at plus one of six against the Saints at home. CJ Stroud is the best. Uh, I will not be on the Texans money line for the first time all season in week seven because they're on a bye, but that probably means we'll be back on them uh, week eight. So excited to have the Texans back in my life next week. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Want to give a big thank you once again to Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at RyanAlexander underscore W. Tomorrow, we are going to preview week number eight in college football with Ed Fang. This uh, slate looks awesome. So I'm excited to pick Ed's brain on Ohio State, Penn State, and other big matchups across this week. Get that by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. You can also check us out on FanDuel's YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast and at FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in. Good luck to you for betting some baseball for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.